Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Hello, everybody. Here we are, Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Yes, we're bringing in the good energy. We're bringing in the thunder and steel as well. We're bringing it all in. The matrix is being exposed everywhere. The lie code, the slave code, you know, all that stuff. Oh, this, this is what the truth. This is the reality. Oh, wow, that's not true either. Oh, this is the reality. You know, you better buy it. No, it's not true. So I've got a guest today that's going to help expose this matrix in our own way around all the nonsense, around uh, what you should be doing as a parent. I'm sure stuff like that will come out. How to be a conscious parent, how to be a wake person and claim back your sovereignty. Clear the shame and guilt programs of matrix is impressing you with all the time. We know what that's all about. It's asking us to evolve in the consciousness to a higher level ever than ever before, right? So we thank it totally for that. And so she's got a lot to talk about that and much, much more. Whatever whatever comes in the flow, we've agreed already. It's going to be amazing. we got to clear the fear porn, as she says, and we're going to do it right here. So, Allie, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, Daniel. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I love that intro. Like, I'm so pumped. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yes. And so let me tell you about Allie. Allie Levine is an intuitive stylist, certified breath work practitioner, and transformation expert. And by the way, I'm just going to start throwing it. She's worked with people you know that are on stages, uh, rock and singers and everything, <laughs> all these uh, uh, famous people. I, she's helped uh, her clients breathe through their closet, tap into their design of their soul, and come home to themselves through the wardrobe of their dreams. I love that. Uh, throughout her career, she has uh, styled countless well-known celebrities, as I was mentioning, right? It's just fun. It's so fun. Jesse McCartney, Joey King, Candace, I believe, Bur Bure, um, and, and many, many more. I'll just put it that way. There's too, too many names to list. Right? <laughs> and supported networks like Nickelodeon, Bravo, E, local and worldwide new news stations, um, red carpet events, even started the Bravo, a show called Stripped that aired in 2017 through 2018. Uh, she recently walked away from Hollywood at the height of her career to support conscious women that uh, she connects with the most. Uh, so she, she helps you to just absolutely move through any sense of breakdown and into your deeper soul purpose, shifting those lower frequencies into higher states of consciousness through breath work, through meditation, through divine coaching, facilitating the shifting and your own healing and to help you to step in to surrender and awaken to your best self. That is breathe, embody, surrender, transform. And there's just so much more. All right. We're going to get right into it. So Allie, wow. What a journey you've been on. You've <laughs> on this, uh, you know, wonderful path of we talked about because my we've got to talk about this. Like my I think it'll be fun for the audience that follows me, too. And my daughter's into fashion merchandising. And what what is part of Allie's background? She comes from fashion merchandising. <laughs> yeah, we like, first talked about that. Right. Yeah, I studied in college fashion merchandising and design before I even got into styling, before I even knew what a stylist was, shopping, any of it. It was the core front of, you know, the foundation of fashion was merchandising and design. So yeah, I love that your daughter uh, is into that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so cool. It's just the synchronicity of everything. And it, it's so beautiful how life is just a huge gift every day, every moment. <laughs> so I love it. And so, yeah, and that you walked the path because I you started, you were so wonderful, so generous. You detailed your career to me uh, uh, like in 10 minutes, like as much as you could. <laughs> and then I did this, I did that. <laughs> it was so fun. And you know, she she worked with. Uh, I just want to inspire people. You worked uh, uh, for Target, you know, with with doing all that wonderful stuff, and you know, other. Uh, I'm kind of doing your bio for you, uh, but <laughs> I just want to just get this information to people. Like, and then you went to like mid higher end brands, you said, and mm -hmm. things like that, and and before you know it, like this incredible story. I'd love you to tell the story because it's a fun story, and then 
before you know it, she's like working with dressing stars and stuff. So like, tell us how in the world did that all come together starting, you know, working at, uh, uh, for Target brings a certain picture to people's minds, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, how do you go from that? Like, wow, because you didn't even imagine that happened, I don't think. Oh, no, no, definitely not. No, yeah. um, and I always joke, by the way, because Target, so like, you know, like, m like basic to some people. So I always say it's Target, just like. <laughs> there we go. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would always tell people I work at Target when I was working there. Um, but no, thank you. I mean, so uh, like you said, I studied fashion merchandising and design. Um, I very much thought I was going to either be in the design world or the buying world. I was in, you know, retail in the corporate world. When I worked for Target, I was an executive of soft lines, which basically I was like executing everything on the floor with their clothing. I ended up working with like the go international designers that people remember back then dating myself, but they used to like bring in all these like designers from all over the world and then like see how they would do in the store, like as a target line. And so I would get to like be a part of that and help them pick different things. And over time, I just basically kind of burned out in retail and realized it like, wasn't working for me. So then I shifted, as you said, to corporate, started working for like Coach and Talbots and Lacoste and other companies doing more design, more pattern, more product development, understanding how they came together and how it worked. And then uh, the stock market crashed and it was like, oh, hey, I finally felt like I was doing what I loved and I wanted to do. And I remember being so mad at like God and the universe and everything and being like, why? I just found my footing. I finally like making money and I'm enjoying my job and all these things. And, you know, I found a corporate job I like and blah, blah, blah. And, it, you know, it was all gone. You know, the stock market crashed and it was like. Fashion was the last thing on the list. They let go, you know, of all of us. And I had no job. I didn't even know I was going to have an apartment, you know, uh, shortly after that. And I kind of started soul searching and was like, what am I going to do? Like, like, what does this look like for me? And I thought to myself, I always loved fashion. But another piece that I always felt like was missing was like the person that went along with it. Because even when I would do handbags for coach, I would say to my bosses in the meeting, like, hey, well, let's like try to envision who this woman is that would be carrying this bag. And everybody else would kind of look at me and would be like, no, 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 let's get back to like the actual drawing board and like look at the sketches and the colors, the leathers. And, and I get that. But I'm a very visual hands-on person. And so I was always trying to like imagine who these people are who would be receiving, you know, these types of bags and that kind of thing. And so I think I started realizing like, oh, I think I actually want to be like with people, but I didn't even know what that was because the mm -hmm. stylist didn't really exist back then. Like Bridget Zoe, I think was just starting to like have her show. So like, again, like, you know, dating myself, that was a while ago. Um, and so I really like had no clue, like what, you know, like what I was going to do. Um, and I think that's what actually made me like kind of fall into it, right? Like when we go through things in our lives and we can't control because we're not in control at all anyways right but we sure feel like we are and we allow that like surrender i don't think i allowed it but i finally like fell into it and as i surrendered all of a sudden it was like okay well what would be possible if i was to just try something new and i started calling different friends and, and family and i had some connections in the entertainment industry and i said hey i don't have a job does anyone want me to like help with something, can I do a project, whatever. And long story short, um, I had a couple different opportunities with like um, <laughs> Jessica and Nick Lachey back when they were a married couple and they did their show. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Such a crazy show. But I, they were like, yeah, can you go help them? They, you know, they literally need you to source like random fabrics or things that like Jessica wanted that were ridiculous or literally go find like certain donuts that they needed, you know, to eat that day on set, whatever it was. <laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever, I don't have a job. So I like, you know, just ran and like did random errands and that landed me into another random job with like MTV and I just kind of got bounced around. Mm. Um, and then uh, the movie, Wall Street When Never Sleeps came to New York and Oliver Stone was looking for an assistant and I went and met with his team and I, you know, I sat there and I, I was telling you, we were on the phone, like I got myself all dressed up, like super cute little, you know, like top and blouse and skirt and high boots and thinking like, yeah, I'm going in for this like fashion assistant job. Uh, no, I sit down and he's like, I need someone who's basically going to be my bitch. Like I need someone who's going to be around. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and he's like you know, do you think you could do that? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess so. And he's like, you know, it, it pays, it's six months. And I'm thinking, well, I don't have a job. This is the closest thing to something, right? I'm about to lose like my apartment, if not, and go home with my parents up, but you know, up north of New York. And I was living outside the city at that time. And I didn't want that. I wanted to keep my independence. And I was like, all right, sure. Yeah. 
I guess I could do that. And uh, Oliver Stone, obviously, as most know, is quite genius. He's quite amazing. Um, as, as tough as he was, he was so inspiring and in that he just constantly like threw me into things to learn, whether it was like breaking down scripts and bringing things to set. And yes, of course, I was doing all the coffee, all the, you know, bitch jobs, but he let me learn a little bit too. And um, after a few months, he was like, all right, I know you really love fashion and everything, costume. I'm going to let you one day a week work with the costume department. And that ended up being the game changer. That team uh, really mentored me and took me under their wing. And I got to, again, still be the girl who ran around and did everything, feed the cat, go do the groceries. But I got to still be a part of the costume department. And I got to, you know, go to the costume designer's house and, you know, sit in on meetings and watch fittings. And even if I was still doing a million things for them, I was getting to be a part of it and see that world. And once I got a feeling for that and a taste for that, I was like, okay, this is now, I know what I wanted to do. This is the next step. This makes sense. This is why now I was put into this craziness. And that's kind of where it began. And I started asking questions like, how do I become a designer? You know, how do I start doing, you know, design? How do I start like walking into, you know, like this world? And they were like, well, you know, you got to start as a shopper and start helping in sourcing and working with the assistant designers. And so I slowly just started, you know, going from project to project, movies, TV shows in New York. At that time, New York City was doing a lot of projects. So I was able to kind of pick up and do different things. And then I got asked to go to Atlanta. I worked on Big Mama's house with Martin Lawrence. And I always laugh because I was in charge of his fat suit for anyone that knows that movie. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, Daniel, that was so intense. It was like um, 111 degrees in Atlanta and it, he was sticky and sweaty. And that fat suit was just, I mean, that was a beast. Uh, it was hard to keep so did you have to create it? You created that whole thing? Wow. I, I, mean, I didn't create it. I was in charge of maintaining okay. it. Like making okay, sure right, right, right. Not, not smelly, uh, you know, not sticky. He could get back into it each time for each scene. Right. Uh, you know, uh, air drying, I mean, all the things to keep him comfortable. Yeah. Um, but it was really cool because that team and I bonded and they were like, what are you doing, you know, in New York? And I was like, well, I've always lived there and, you know, I'm trying the fashion world. And they were like, you need to be in LA. And I was like, I don't know. I've only been there to visit. Like I I've always been a New Yorker, you know, like, no, no, if you want to do red carpets and more of what you're saying, like you got to go to LA and they helped me and gave me an opportunity and basically said, if you go with us now, uh, you know, we'll go back with you. We'll help you get into the costume union. We'll set you up. You'll have to work with us for a couple of years, but we'll get you going and we'll get you your experience and who gets those kind of opportunities. Right. So I turned to my boyfriend who's now my husband and love of my life. And I said, I'm going to LA. And he was like, okay, what about me? You know? And, uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but like, this is this, I got to go for this opportunity. And luckily he packed his bags and moved with me and off to California, you know, we went um, and we were there for 11 years um, and it was an amazing journey. And that was where I got to start into styling. And I started working as an assistant to different, you know, stylists and costume designers all over. And eventually started getting my own clients who were mostly like D-listers and people nobody had heard of that were just like, yeah, you could dress them for free. Like nobody cares. And all of a sudden, someone would get best dressed and somebody would get an award and, and my name was attached to it. And all of a sudden it was like, Ali Levine Design was born. Like, oh my gosh, I'm getting asked about, you know, this. And hey, do you want to be on camera and talk about why they wore this and how it made them look and how they got this role now because you put them in a certain outfit. And it was so wild to watch. And it's funny now, right? Like being way more awake and conscious coming out of that and, and going forward now. I look at it and I'm like, oh, wow, I was actually healing people with fashion, with color, with clothing, with all these things. I just wasn't recognizing that I was doing it because I wasn't awake to that consciousness in that time. Mm -hmm. I was just really in my gift and just having fun doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you're, or the way I'm hearing it anyway, let me know if this is correct. You start realizing some of the deeper um, gifts you have in doing that rather than like, yeah, I just have to put this thing together. To, you yeah, know, exactly. but, like, at first I was like, oh, I just picked like a great shirt or a great skirt or, oh yeah, that's, you know, shoe works with this. And you just think in your mind, like, well, anybody could do that, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, well, no, you've got people like Holly Robinson Pete who was told that she didn't even look 50 and then got booked on like, you know, a major series next year because of what you did with her that year. You know, like you're seeing these actual changes in people's lives and you're like, 
oh, I was a part of that, wasn't I? <laughs> you know? Right, right. Well, you're definitely a person, that servant person where you're just like, okay, what do we need to do? What's next? You know, like you, you've got that in you. You're not thinking like, oh, wow, look at, you know, like all the time anyway. You're not thinking uh, maybe historically, especially like, look at the difference I'm making. Like you're just a little bit more like, what's next? What's next? Yeah, right? totally. Yeah, what's next? Just, what's next? Especially back then when I was not awake or like present or conscious is very much like what's next okay i got i got into new york times cool how do i get into harbor bazaar like it was the kind right, right. of next, sure, next. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. well i mean that that is a formula for more success for certain people everybody's got their own rhythm their own design right in life yeah so, definitely so that's definitely part of part of your thing so uh that's awesome that's so fun it's just so funny here i think I gotta imagine, I mean, there was a lot of intensity, right? There's a lot yeah. of intensity in, in in having that sort of success. Like again, not everybody experiences massive intensity, but most people do. Most people oh, yeah, a lot of intensity with elevating up and doing uh their bigger work, whatever it might be. And you, you know, you're a constant evolution, but I'm just saying, like to get on that so-called level, you know, to get at that level. Oh, oh yeah, I completely agree with you. And I think that's where, when you said like in my bio, like where my burnout came to be quite honest, because mm -hmm. I came to a place where I was no longer happy and fulfilled in what I was doing. I was feeling like everybody was just expecting me to do things and there was no longer like gratitude for many clients. It was, I felt like I was so heavy in my ego. I didn't even recognize who I was anymore. Like there was just so much going on and then I just got to complete burnout and I was like, I can't show up here anymore. I don't even know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not actually even getting joy out of this anymore. Like, what am I doing? Because when I got into it, I always said, like, I had a passion for fashion. Like, I was so passionate. I was living and breathing it. I didn't care what time. It'd be 2 a.m. and I'd be running to go help Oliver Stone. It didn't matter. I was so excited to be a part of it. And somewhere along the way, that burnout came and it was just like, I don't even want to go deal with this person on set tomorrow, you know, and, and that wasn't me ever. So, you know, I think like you said, like that, that um, intensity and also like that density came mm -hmm. and everything all together just was just like this heavy storm. And I was like, whoa, I got to take a step back. So how did the, uh, how did that intensity hit you? You know, I know that when things are moving forward for me, this, like, I was just telling you before we got on, man, I'm doing all this work, doing all this stuff. And I know it's all leading to this, these big results and everything. And there's an intensity into it. And if I was, uh, if I let it take me over completely, so to speak, like I, I would be like, who needs meditation? Who needs this? Who needs that? Right. I just, just keep going, totally. keep going, baby. You know, like, I can see that happening. Right. And and so there's no breath, there's no, you know, pause button, there's nothing, just go, go, go. Uh, I can see that happening. And I imagine like where you're working, right? That's the culture. That's what's expected. Yeah, that is the like, culture, like, you, right? you know, no sleep, hustle, yeah. hustle, grind, 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 um, right. you know, and that works, right? To a time, especially when I was young, like it totally worked. And I think, you know, when I became a mom, especially, it was like, wait, my perspective changed completely. And I had no idea, one, how tired I, I was obviously going to be, you know, you're a dad. Uh, you know, I mean, um, how much also like my perspective was going to change, how different I'm going to feel in my body. I mean, everything like mind, body, soul. I had no idea like what was on, you know, that other side of that and what that change was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And my industry just wanted me to like rush right back in, you know, and like, like let's, let's, let's go. You know, what do you mean you're taking a break? Like, come on, get back to it. And it was like, hold on. I just had a baby. By the way, I had a C-section, 42 hours, like, you know, surgery, like, hold the phone, you know, and it was just like, no, 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 no. Like we need this. I mean, so much. So when I was um, in labor with my first daughter, which was totally my fault and I had no boundaries, but my client was texting me when I was in labor wow. talking about her gown and I was having like serious conversations and like going back and forth with her team about like what they needed to do. My husband kept trying to take my phone. He did it at one point. He finally like took it and was like, you're done. We're, we're trying to have a baby here. Like <laughs> no more phone. <laughs> But in my mind, right, like that, like, go, go, go. I was just like, it's fine. Like my body's doing what it's supposed to be doing. No, it wasn't. And it explains to me why I had the traumatic birth. It explains to me why she got stuck. Like there's so much to unpack there that I didn't realize in that time. But as I become more awake and conscious and gone on this journey, I'm like, oh, because I was so in that cycle, right? And I didn't ha take a breath. I didn't know. I didn't know what meditation was at that time. Like I knew, but I didn't touch it. And I was so like stuck in that, you know, cycle that when she's like, poor thing is actually trying to come through my body. 
she can't because my whole body is tense and not open to actually receive her, you know? And so it was like, oh, you know, like light bulb moment way later. But you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, I was literally dealing with a client and, and what was happening instead of actually being embodied and focusing on the fact that I was giving birth, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Right. Wow. Wow. That, I mean, that I don't, I don't think I've ever shared that with anyone before, by the way, like I've shared it with friends. Oh. I don't think I've ever shared that on a show, by the way. I just thought about that when we were talking and I'm like, but it's important to share because I feel like that's like maybe not exactly that, but I feel like that's a very common thing with mothers and women. Like they don't realize how much they have to actually surrender and embody the process of birth. And then they right. wonder why a lot of times our bodies don't do what they're supposed to do. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean that that's wow, that just goes to show, yeah, like the the level it gets to for 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 people and and that those circles, like it, it yeah, uh, it's it's that's just totally mad, really, when you think about <laughs> it. It is when you really think about it. Like nothing is that much of an emergency, and that's what I was doing. Like it's it's right. kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, you're not dead yet, right? Come on, like, what's my next gal? <laughs> right, literally, like, come on, let's go. Can we pump some life into you? Like, okay, you know, it's like, oh my God, yeah. So it, it just came to a place where it just was so intense and so much density. And I think too, like, you know, spiritually, obviously, right? Like, you know, like you really feel energy way differently when you start to like really awaken. And I think for me, I was also getting more sensitive. I would go to certain sets, like, pregnant and even after I had my first daughter and I would feel off things that never ever bothered me before all of a sudden were bothering me I would like go to a client's house and would just be like oh why does it feel like so heavy here today like and and I never experienced it before and I was like what is wrong with me so at first I just felt like I was going crazy because I was just like I don't understand why everything is bothering me but then over time I started recognizing I was on a spiritual journey Mm -hmm. and things were happening and to be honest like it took me actually getting down on my hands and knees, which like, I really honestly don't do very much. And I just started crying, talk about the surrender. I was pregnant with my first daughter and I was just crying and asking God in the universe, like, what is going on? Why do I feel crazy? Why do I feel like I'm burning out? Why is nothing re- like recognizing me and nothing's resonating? Like, I don't understand. And I swear, I heard a voice that said like, you are done styling as far as like this celebrity world goes, like yeah. this is over. And I remember hearing it and still being like, nope, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, no, you got, you don't got that one right. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, never mind. That wasn't the answer I was searching for. <laughs> All right. Happens all the time. I know myself when I see people are really caught up with, in a pattern, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Uh, I'll be like, hey, it's time to stop that. It's time to- Oh man, you know, the, the workaholic kind of people and whatnot. Oh no. We're not, no. They're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I'll say, like, hey, it's time to slow down, maybe do more of your healing work in the world now. Oh, I'm gonna get to that later. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> That'll come later, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometime when I retire or something like that, you know, down the line, eventually I'll get there. I'm like, right. yeah. Yeah, maybe when you're dead, you'll do your spiritual work. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it is, it's crazy what it takes for, for us to surrender, like how stubborn we can be with that. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. What do you think it was for you? What do you think was, now that you've had all the, you know, time to really digest this, it's like, what do you think was really driving all that? So and maybe if somebody else is sort of in that place still, like, I mean, what, what do you think was driving that for you? Uh, I think we're driving the, like the, like nonstop, like, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I think definitely ego, right? Like we can get mm-hmm. caught up in our ego so easily and not recognize that like, that is what's taking over. I think like I got into fashion, obviously like in a true state of gratitude and like so excited to get to help people and and light people up and work with them. And then somewhere along the way, Hollywood's dark, right? We all know that. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) Hollywood, my own, you know, ego, everything just kind of like fell in. It was like, oh, I get to fly all over the world and I'm with so-and-so and and I go here and I go there. And don't get me wrong. There was some really cool things I got to do. Yeah. But there was definitely a lot of ego behind so much of it. You know what I mean? Right. And I didn't realize that until I really came out of it and kind of like mourn the death of myself and like recognize like, oh, she doesn't exist anymore. Like, and I don't even know who really she was for quite some time. I don't even know if I actually even 
like recognize that person anymore. You know what I mean? And like actually realize like, let me come back to like who I've always been before like the world, the matrix tells us. And that was kind of the same thing for me. I felt like in a way in Hollywood, I was told how I needed to show up, how I needed to be, what I needed to say. Don't say this, don't do that. You know, all these things. And I think I just got so caught up in wanting to be exactly what people wanted me to be also a recovering people pleaser you know what i mean and it just the people pleasing the ego driven the hollywood the constant climb the ladder climb the ladder you can get here you can go here you can go here all of it just became this like massive cycle of like must do must do don't worry about yourself deal with yourself later you know do this do this this client's happy make them happy this one's happy make them happy and it was just this constant like climbing that was never going to end thank god it fell because i just would have probably kept climbing until i literally burned out like god knows how i don't know if you had this thought in the midst of it but i know like uh, again i think even currently because i'm more busy lately than i normally am and like okay uh my mind says oh but this won't last long we just need to get this done then we'll get to rest oh now we just have this uh, then we'll get to rest then we just need to get this done. Then we'll get, and then it's always another thing, right? Oh, we just, then we'll get to rest. Um, and then that time never comes. So, I mean, I, I've integrated, you know, I integrate my day or two hour lunches and all this stuff, but I've, I've noticed and I'm working on it right now with the sense of intensity and things building up. It's like, okay, that, that day ain't coming, the train you're on right now. That day ain't coming. So you better mm -hmm. integrate breath within the, the intensity then. And that's what you do, right? I mean, you help yeah. people directly with their breath and all that. So how, for people that uh, don't, you know, some people don't resonate. Some people are really like, I just want to be and they're in that state, right? They're great with being, but they, then they don't take action. And then, then that creates suffering. Some sure. people are really good with action, right? But they're not spiritually awake or integrated that way with being. So, but the people that are like still tilting too strong, let's say if they're, they're a little bit more on the action, they're losing too much breath. How can they get more breath? I mean, you literally, again, you're a breath work teacher. So how can they get more breath within the activity? Yeah, that's a, a really good point and good question. Um, so, I mean, first off, like restoring our nervous system is literally how we start to like take ourselves out of that like constant fight or flight that we just spoke to that that constant hamster wheel that is fight or flight you are in shallow breathing you are in shallow thoughts therefore you are in shallow action in my opinion and mm -hmm. so when your nervous system is in that triggered state and you're in a sympathetic system and not in the homeostasis of a parasympathetic nervous system which is the rest and digest and the way babies come into this world and children really breathe because you know there's nothing really knocking them you know out of it until later on when the matrix tells them how to be and so i think you know even if you're someone who's of action just understanding like okay if something is happening around me and i'm kind of starting to you know trigger off this or my responses are becoming you know more intense as the day goes on because there's a lot happening like taking that moment and being aware, right? Like awareness is key. So having that awareness to be like, okay, something's happening right now. Instead of continuing on and going forward, I'm going to use this time to take those five minutes, take those 10 minutes, whatever it looks like. Maybe it's only two minutes, but like literally sit with yourself and say, okay, I'm just going to take a few deep breaths so I can restore my nervous system. I'm just in the nose, out the mouth in the nose, out the mouth, drop my shoulders, let my body sink in, and just continue that for as long as I can, like genuinely take that moment of time for myself yeah. and notice just by doing that, how much more centered I feel, how much more restored I feel in this moment. And I actually have more energy to move forward and create more action and actually be more productive and more creative because mm -hmm. now I'm in actual deep thoughts. Now I'm in actual creation. I'm no longer in the triggering fight or flight where everything's shallow and I actually don't have a thought and I'm just doing whatever because it's the next thing to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, in my opinion, there's a way of being and doing that can be way more embodied. You just have to really feel into the, your body and, and really understand like I can be doing both but I have to understand that I have to be more in the being regardless and take action from there. And that's where I think I am now, you know, with my career and all that I'm doing is like, 
I'm still super pumped. I'm still super motivated. I'm working and doing a ton of stuff, but I'm really in the being and being aware when I notice like, oh, I'm really feeling off or I'm triggering at my husband or my kids, or I, I'm triggering at someone who called me to ask me something. And why is that? And then going, oh, cause I didn't do any breath work today. Mm-hmm. Oh, because I didn't do any meditation earlier. You know, I didn't journal. I didn't take a walk. I didn't ground, whatever it may be. Right. And there's several different tools we can use, but in my opinion, being, you know, breathwork practitioner and everything, I've just seen over and over again in my life, every time I come back to the breath, every time I take myself out of survival, I go to thriving. And I truly notice it's because my nervous system doesn't lie for any of us. It shows us exactly what we need. So when you breathe, like, are you more energized and ready to go again? Are you tired and the body feels like it could use a nap? Like, what is it? that Are you emotional? Like, what is it that comes up in your system that comes up energy, right? Like comes up in the body, our emotions or energy in motion. Like what is moving? What is happening? So that you know, oh, that's what I needed to receive. That's what I have to actually dial into and give myself time to do versus like, oh, I took a few deep breaths. Oh, and I'm back into it. And it didn't even actually do anything. And then I'm back to the action. It's really the embodiment part. And that's like the being. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I did that, I, I, yeah, you feel that, I feel that large sense of presence and Mm -hmm. that odd, um, deeper energy, just like, oh yeah. Which is like, just. Right. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. That's what that felt like. Like, oh, that's coming home to myself. That's how the body's supposed to feel, you know? And Mm -hmm. it's like the body is the channel, right? Like the mind is what spins and tells us all these things. And sure, there's some great creation there, but the body's the channel. The body's going to give you what's up and it's going to let you keep moving forward and doing what you need to do. So if you listen to your body, you're going to know how to take action from that place. And look, there's been times where, you know, I'm working on a project and I'll, you know, do a little bit of breathing and I'll feel like really tired. And I'll say, you know what? I'm going to finish these two things I need to do. And then I'm going to go lay down with my kids and watch a show for a little bit. And then I'm going to come back to it because- Mm-hmm. I can really feel like my body's about to just tank out and then I'm going to be no use, right? Like once your health is down, like you can't do anything anyway. So you might as well really restore and rejuvenate and renew yourself, even if only a few minutes a day and start there and then build up and see like the changes. Because I promise you every single client I breathe with, whether it's once or over and over again, they always say they go from a breakdown to a breakthrough and they feel the heaviness and they feel the shift. And then all of a sudden that elevated consciousness that you spoke to Daniel is exactly what comes online. And it's like, oh, and guess what? You get to create and and do even more and activate even better than you were before. Right, right. Because the idea is like, who's got time to breathe? You know, like, (laughs) let me just- you have time to spin out, right? You have time to spin out. You have time to be triggered. You have time to, you know, be trying to figure out a million things to do. Well, instead of that, how about, oh, let me, let me find my center. Let me figure out, you know, what's going on. And then I can actually- you know, come, I mean, I tell my husband all the time, you know, like he'll be in spin out mode and I'm like, okay, why don't you take a few deep breaths and then come back to the space and see where you're at, you know? And, and he's learning. I mean, he, me obviously being like in this work, right? Like he's starting to do it more because he sees me doing it so much. And I do it with our kids and everything. And it doesn't work right every time because we're human, right? Like it, we're, we're, we just, we don't always listen to our soul. We listen to the right. stupid humanness of ourselves, myself included, you know? Yeah. But when you can, you just notice the shift so much faster and you're like, wow, I'm such a powerful being. I have to actually do that more because then I'm actually going to show up way better than I did before. You know, and that's what I noticed for me. And that's what motivates me to keep doing it. Like not only just how good I feel in the practice, but then I notice like I actually get 10 X more out of the next thing I'm doing. And I wouldn't have even had that. So it, it's like such to me, it's like a no brainer. Like we were given it as a g- gift to actually like be alive here on earth but it's actually like a true superpower when we tap into our bodies and like breathe consciously, which is breath work. Right. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't uh, really made aware of the listening to the body and all that stuff. When I got into spiritual study, it was much more focused on metaphysics, make mm-hmm. things happen, get your mind right, get your mind right. It was never like, yeah, uh, connect with your body, you know, it's not too much. It was much more around get that mind right, get your yeah. thoughts right, and you're going to manifest it all. And, you know, 
but it's like this uh, acquisition thing then only you know it's like uh, more so so yeah from the state of uh being it's like you drop all the the frenetical fearful energy right oh my right. god oh my god i gotta get that done oh my god what if i don't get that done i gotta get that done. right exactly <laughs> right and, and then you just like calm all the energy uh, it's four 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 on my angel numbers my clock uh, uh, it's like you know calm all the energy and it's like mm. oh okay and then everything else calms too like it's not just you right like you change your inner and then the outer changes and you're like wait that's all that's 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 all it took you know like I, i'll give a funny example but like you know today i got pulled over because i was trying to figure out where i was going earlier and i was like looking at you know my phone trying to figure out the directions and i like pulled over but i was like probably looking at it as i was pulling over and the cop comes behind me and pulls me over and old me would have totally spun out and be like, oh, sorry, what's going on you know the whole thing and i was like all right took a few deep breaths and i was like all right i i know what they're gonna say it's fine let me just and he comes over and he's like, Hey, how's it going? And I'm like, Hey, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm like, did you see me? I'm like, I'm trying to figure out my directions. And he's like, yeah, are you okay? Like, I just wanted to make sure you're right. Like you looked like you were lost. And I'm like, I am. And I'm trying to figure it out. And I was like, super calm and just like spoke to him. And he was like, all right. He's like, no worries. Let me just check your license. Make sure like, I'm sure it's clean. I'm like, yeah, it is. you know, and he's like, okay, have a good day. You know? And it was like, mm -hmm. and it was over. Yeah, yeah. And already like I was laughing at myself because I'm like, look at that. You like, calm the situation you calmed yourself he was calm everything was received and you moved through and everything was fine now the old me like before all this embodiment would have been spinning apologizing probably crying like freaking out you know what i mean like all the things and then they're like okay here's a ticket and you're crazy like, you know I mean? <laughs> quite likely anyway i mean possible we don't know but that's the thing like because you know, the mind can analyze that. I mean, like yeah he would have done that anyway but right. we don't we don't know we don't know uh i do know it makes a difference you know we, we change our consciousness the results are going to change mm -hmm. um what for for sure one way or another even if he did the same action you got to experience at a whole better level a right. much better exactly. level. so that's that's the key if the the extra goodies come along which they often do you know that's great too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> So we're, uh, one of the things I know you focus in on is, you know, uh, with moms and stuff, moms are like, wow. I mean, a lot of moms anyway are like, especially moms that are concerned about their kids extra, right? That are really worried. There's different parenting styles. They're all, all can, could be okay potentially, but some, you know, with, uh, mothers, I want to say, um, uh, could be a little bit more laid back, you know. Oh, they'll be yeah. fine, you know. Other moms are the they call them the helicopter, helicopter moms. <laughs> yeah, you know, control and make sure you yeah. do everything right and everything. Get you know, you're not hey, and you did. I I know moms like they know they have the problem. Like they literally will. I'll be like within two minutes. Like they criticize their kid like four times. They like, didn't even do anything wrong, so to speak. Like even even theoretically wrong. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're eating another banana. What are you doing? Now you're doing this. Now you're doing that or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, what's your problem? And they're just like, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what it is. I just feel like I need to get in there. And I why, you know, like that's that's basically they are not really telling me all this, but like it's what I can tell. It's like they feel like they have to control. They have to control. Yeah. And see, that's a big thing for a lot of um and control is a direct result yeah. of fear, right? Like if I'm right. controlling, like you're in you're in fear if you're controlling, right? Because you can't trust. Mm -hmm. and have faith of what's going on you think and you think you're controlling and you're not actually controlling but it feels good to feel like you're controlling and that's and and, and that's a whole lower frequency and program of fear right and and it's true mm -hmm. i feel for moms because i mean when i became a new mom i had a million people telling me all different things to do with my daughter and you know and, and here i was in heavy postpartum depression you know and i was like how do i even function and like get her and i ready for the day and this person says to do this and this says to do that and you know, I don't even know what, you know, what I believe and what feels right and what I should be doing. So then I was doing everybody else's stuff. It was making me feel awful that I was, you know, you know, putting her down for certain naps that I didn't know if that she even wanted. I was tired. I mean, like the list goes on, you know, giving her certain things, you know, to eat that I wasn't sure. And I had to go, you know, look up like, you know, or, you know, she has a fever, like let the fever run. No, give her this. You know, it was like this guy just constant. It was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to lose my mind truly. And I'm going to postpartum depression. I don't even recognize who I am, what's happening. 
And it was so heavy on me. And I, I feel for moms because so many moms get caught up in that. Like it's so easy to not only get caught up in it, but then spin and judge yourself for it. And that's where the misery and the true, you know, um, depression comes in because you just start to sit there and you're like, oh, at least I did, you know, it was like, oh, you know, you're a terrible mom. Like, you know, like you don't even know what you're doing. You know, you can't even show up. You can't make a decision. You know, like you have everybody else has to tell you this. You don't know what to do with yourself. You can't even look at yourself in the mirror because you hate your body because you don't like the O2C section. You, you know, you didn't get the birth you wanted. Like the list goes on. You just shame, mm-hmm. shame, 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 right. judge and judge and judge. Mm-hmm. And I think so many moms do that, whether they're conscious of it or not. And it's such a detriment to us. Like, it's like all of a sudden you just feel so horrible and you're like, oh, well, I don't even know what I'm doing or why I'm even a mom. Like, you know, and, and it's like just these stories, like you said, that we tell ourselves that aren't even real. And they're just like, you know, constantly um, creating themselves because we're telling ourselves that's what they are. And so for me, you know, going back to when we talked about like spiritual journey and becoming awakened that was the start for me. It was like, I just got so dark and so lost and I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, okay, I already stopped like styling. Cause that felt like burnout and didn't feel right here. I am now as a new mom and I don't even know what I'm doing. And I don't even know who I am. How do I find myself again? And that is when, um, you know, no, um, I don't want to say like, you know, you can't do it, but big pharma loves to push pills and scripts, right? They tried with me it was very much like this is what you need to be on this is what you need to be doing and I, it was funny when we talk about the ego right the ego of me wanted to take them because it was like hey about five six weeks you'll be feeling good again you'll probably go back to doing certain work like you know you'll feel like yourself again and I'm thinking oh I can maybe go back to set I can maybe do some clients you know with her I could figure some things out and my soul was like mm, mm, mm. like there was just like this major no that was like don't do it don't take it And so once I said no, and then of course my doctor wrote me off and was like, I can't help you then, you know, good luck. And it was like, oh, okay, thanks so much. Um, You know, it was like, how am I going to, what am I going to do? How am I going to move forward? You know, and that's where the healing work really began. It was like, I started reaching out, um, you know, to a spiritual mentor. I, you know, found a therapist for like cognitive talk therapy. And she was the one who was like, you need to meditate. And I was like, I hate meditating. I was like, I don't meditate. And she's like, oh, well, you're going to meditate every day. And I, was like, <laughs> Love that. and I was like, no, I don't meditate. And she's like, doesn't matter. You're going to do it for five minutes. You're going to sit there and just allow yourself to do it. Five minutes a day won't kill you every day. And you're going to journal about it every single day. So I literally wrote down every day, you know, I hate meditating for weeks. I I love that. I love that. That's so fun. I really hate meditating. This shit doesn't work. I mean, it was like. It doesn't work. (laughs) And and then one like morning, literally, it was like, I want to say maybe three months in, it's four months in, maybe five minutes in, uh, somewhere in the journey, because I really couldn't tell you the full, I was so in it. I, I remember waking up and I like heard the birds chirping mm-hmm. and like I heard my daughter next to me like giggle and I was like oh that was so cute and like I just there was just a shift mm-hmm. and I was just like wait a second what like wh- what was that like it, you know I mean? it was almost like like surreal to me like what like what and I wrote down in my journal like I meditated today and I I noticed the birds were chirping and my daughter made a really cute giggle you know and it was like huh you know and and I said that to her and she was like okay and and I was like and I didn't feel like horrible I guess today you know then the next day it was like I got out of bed and I looked at myself you know in the mirror and I was like I don't hate my body today you know and it was like just all these like things just started to slowly shift Mm -hmm. that like showed me something was working right I don't think I was ready to admit it was meditation (laughs) But it was like, oh, this is, you know, this is like what, you know, what what it is. And over time, the journaling and the meditation really started to show me like when I would write down in my gratitude journals, like I am grateful for, you know, my husband, I'm grateful for my daughter. I'm grateful that, you know, my body was able to have her regardless of the birth I didn't want to have, like all these things that I could start to shift the way I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. It just started to slowly shift and then more and more happened and more and more came. And I think that was when I really started to find the light at the end of the tunnel. And I started like slowly finding myself again, you Mm -hmm. know, and that was really what 
led to, I think, my awakening was like really understanding that there is more out there to support you when you're willing to surrender and be open to it and use tools and, you know, understand that it's not just what's in front of us. There is so much more. And um, I started getting, you know, even more signs and just like different, like, you know, angel numbers and just books in front of me that I, you know, wouldn't have recognized before, like all kinds of stuff that I know, you know, what I'm speaking Mm -hmm. to. And Mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I'm on this new journey. I don't really know what it is, but I'm just going to surrender to it. And I'm going to just kind of allow myself for the first time in my life to just let things flow instead of trying to control everything that I had been doing for so many years. Yeah, that's so amazing. I have uh, um, somebody in my life. I don't know if I want to identify them. Uh, you know, <laughs> always worry about what they might think if they listen to the show. But I have someone in my life who uh, is a mom and works. You know, and has a little bit biz- side business and everything. And um, she she has that whole thing going on where it's, it's so stressful. You know, it's so uh you know brings her into you know sadness and maybe depression or whatever you know all these level and uh the idea is like i I can't i can't do any i can't make i can't make it i can't i can't do it all i just can't even do it all i can't and then i'm failing here and i'm failing here i'm failing 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 failing. it's all her mind is thinking primarily you know like uh as far as like how well she's doing with it no i'm failing i'm failing i'm failing i'm failing but right. she knows enough, like, no, I know that that's probably not totally true. So um, I, think, I think most moms do that. Yeah. I'm failing. Yeah. I'm failing. I can't show right. it here. I can't show up there. I think that was a big part of my shift, too, was like recognizing that I had to also be like, today, I may have killed it in the mom department, but like my house is a mess. And guess what? Like, I'm going to have to go deal with that now later because everything looks like a bomb blew up because I showed up, you know, like super conscious of like playing with my kids all day, but didn't like care about the messes. Or I showed up for a bunch of podcast interviews and, you know, did a bunch of things with clients and didn't get to really show up, you know, in the other space. And I think there there's times and, you know, seasons for different things too. And I think also like just letting go of the idea of balance. I think that was one of my biggest shifts when I was going through meditation. I forget what meditation I listened to, but they talked about like, It's not a balance. It's a harmony. It's a dance. It's a flow. Mm -hmm. And the more I started allowing myself to flow and realize that I was in ebbs and flows and I was in harmony, even if it didn't feel like harmony all the time, Mm -hmm. I started finding inner peace. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm on this scale of like, this isn't happening. That's not happening. I didn't do this today. This didn't happen today, you know, And, and it starts to feel less overwhelming and more like, oh, I can do this. And I'm not going to be able to do it all every single day. And that's okay. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, that. so definitely uh, maybe I could share this podcast with that person. <laughs> maybe it'll help because she actually did come to the realization. I want to focus on being now, you know, now's my time. I've been doing a lot of doing in my life so far. Now it's time to focus on being and good for her. Isn't that amazing? That's, That's a happening. great revelation to have. Yeah. It's being happening. is so important, right? Like it's right. it's something that like we're told over and over again, like, oh, be present, be present. But I don't think I fully understood what that was until a couple of years ago, like truly, right. like actually being present and what that not only does for someone else, but like what it does for you and your soul and what you're able to you know, receive. And I really believe for me, breath work really shifted me into that because allowing myself to, you know, consciously breathe and feel my nervous system truly, you know, restore and calm and then sit there and receive everything at a really potent level Mm -hmm. and not have like shallowness to it. It was like, oh, like this is actually amazing. Like, this person's sharing this with me and I'm like connecting on it and like really taking it in and understanding it or like we're really having a bonding moment and like actually receiving that versus just having a conversation and then almost forgetting about half the things you talked about like it, it's just so different mm-hmm. right right yeah it is it's it's a whole different uh universe right <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> <For sure>. right <laughs> all right so uh yes we're starting to wrap up a little bit today um yeah, you do you do all this great work with people. Um, I know, you know, uh, moms is a big part of it. Uh, and so you, do you want to tell people more where people can check out more about your work and everything? I know you got to thrive in IG. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, this was so much fun. I know. That was, I was like, wow, time went so fast. Um, 
Yeah. So I, like you said, I mean, I work with everybody, but I really have obviously being a mom of, you know, three little ones, uh, you know, two girls and a boy. Um, my heart is very much, you know, for moms, especially just because I know I'm in it too. And I know what it feels like, like you said, to feel the burnout, to feel the, I'm not doing enough. Um, you know, I'm not surviving, which I just want to say for any mom, uh, you know, listening, you are amazing. You are doing enough. And just by showing up and being you, you're incredible. And, and I mean that truly. Um, and, you know, yeah, that's why I, sh- you know, feel so called to share about breath work and what it can do and how much it can change your life, you know? And like I said, it started with meditation for me and I still meditate pretty much every day. And I love, which I laugh now, cause right, I hate meditation. I love meditation and, and I find it so incredible. But what's amazing about breath work is, especially for moms or someone who is, you know, really, you know, busy and has a lot going on, maybe they don't have the time. So they think to get into a meditation. Mm -hmm. And when you consciously breathe, you bring in more oxygen to the body than you normally would. This is why I was talking about earlier with like when we're shallow breathing all the time, all day, we're not actually really breathing. We're just kind of breathing as we talk, as we do things, because that's what we have to do to live. But Mm -hmm to actually go from survival to thriving, you know, we can actually consciously breathe and do certain breath exercises. They're going to bring more oxygen into the body. It's going to shut off the neuroreceptors in our brain to actually receive it that way. And that's what allows us to go through those heightened states of consciousness and takes us from, you know, the Delta to the gamma to the theta. And all of a sudden you're able to be there and be in that potency. And that's why the shift happens because then the density is able to move out of the body. You're able to truly be embodied in that feeling. And like you said earlier, Daniel, the body then is the channel and it gives you exactly what you need in that moment. And you can release as you need to, you know, you can move through, you maybe have an actual like light bulb moment, like whatever it may be. And you can do that in just a few minutes. So that's why, like I share with moms, especially like, Hey, this is something that you can actually do daily. You just have to actually give yourself the space and the self-love and create that sacred boundary to be able to do so, which I think is also so hard for moms because we feel like no matter what, we have to show up for everybody, but you also have to realize, and I've had to realize that you have to show up for yourself first, because if you're a mess, then everything else can be a mess anyway. So you have to pour into your cup and feel good and be you know, fully charged. And then you can pour out to everybody else. So, you know, that's why, you know, I have such a heart for moms, obviously being in the space that I'm in and, you know, you know, you're a dad, like I think parents in general, it can be really hard on us. And we just have to really have that grace and that compassion to be like, I am worth giving to, I am worth showing up for. So I can show up even more for my child or children. So, yeah. So thank you for, you know, letting me share it. And people can find me at alivine.com is my website. And you can go to like my services and and the different tabs of a spirituality tab. There's a bunch of different things that I uh, do and love. And you can just kind of explore around and see. You'll see a lot of um, old world styling stuff because I haven't fully rebranded yet. So (laughs) you'll see a lot of what Daniel and I kind of talked about. um, I'm like, you know, my my job before and everything. And then where I am now. Um, All my social is at Allie Levine Design. I do spend most of my time on the gram. Um, That's kind of where I... I guess, took off as far as social media um, is concerned. I love to share my words there and my realness um, of what's happening. So that's something that you connect with. Please say hello and reach out and let me know, you know, you heard it um, on Daniel's show. I have a podcast called Awakening with Allie, which when it comes back from hiatus, Daniel will be on, which I'm very excited about. It's all about my spirituality journey, my own awakening and letting other people share theirs because everyone's awakening is different. Um, And I think it's important to help others feel not alone in that journey as well. And yeah, um, if you want to book a session with me, I I think I gave you my Calendly link to put in for the show notes. So you can totally do that. I have all the friends offerings and services. And I haven't really shared this yet, but I, but I will, cause I, I know Daniel's uh, good vibes. I have an app I'm working on. Um, it's a breathwork app and it will be out very soon. And I'm really excited to get to help so many people that are going to take a chance on breathwork and be able to try it with my app. Oh, that's great. That's great. Wonderful. Congrats on all that. I mean, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing to, to have something to to guide you each day and to yeah so what's it going to be called do you have the name yet or no I, you know it's funny I don't I I I, <laughs> I wrote originally wrote down like breathe with Allie 
but it's okay. just not sitting with me. Like I'm like, it's mean. more than that. Like breath work is so much more powerful than just breathing. So no, stay tuned, but you'll know because I'll have my name attached to it. But I'm, I, I'm, that is actually like the final piece right now. Like everything's done and I have to get that done for it to launch. So That's a good chance yeah. we'll know the day by the time this airs. So we'll, we'll let you know. All right. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> It'll awesome. be like in Apple store and Google play and all that. So you'll be able to, you know, get it and there'll be all kinds of different, um, you know, breath work exercises. There's going to be like fun communities on there. Um, all different ways to access me and connect. I'm I'm really excited. It, I my soul has felt called to it, and so I'm really excited to take this next jump into it. Awesome. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, bottom line, you know, just looping back to the beginning of the show, you want to break through all the matrix stuff. Well, take a breath. You know, there you go. There's <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and if you want to elevate your consciousness. Keep yeah. breathing. <laughs> Reminds me of another guest I had. It's just studied with all these spiritual teachers or interviewed them. Uh, a lot of them to see, well, what? how did you get into this? Uh, you know, become enlightened, so to speak. And, uh, you know, like some people like can travel like to these remote villages to find mantras and stuff. So one one of the mantras was uh, a guy, uh, this big travel he made out there and they he says, come here, come close. I'm going to give you the mantra. Come on, come close, really close. Listen really close. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. What? I travel all the way around the world. <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. Just say thank you. Just keep saying thank you. Like, you know, we want to make the mind, the ego wants to make it so complicated, right? Yep. It's you know, so like, true. Just doing the simplest things can make I all. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that with the breath work too. So Okay, wonderful. Well, uh, we're at the time of the show where I go ahead and do a, a little bit of tuning in with you. So you're ready to receive. Yes. All right. right. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so everybody tune in extra because you know there'll be some cool things to learn about Ali, I'm sure, and then also be something in it for you, I'm sure. Okay, so here we go. So yeah, this breath work stuff is really um is huge. I don't know. Uh did, were you a smoker before by chance or no? Never okay. smoked. I mean, okay. I in college, of course, like the trendy, but like I never oh, okay, just like that. Okay. But yeah, this breath, this breath uh energy is is huge. And maybe maybe it's maybe I don't know why that that sort of vibe was coming in, but um I was just like, okay. Maybe the audience is here. Like we always say, like that's why people love smoking. One of the reasons, right? We've heard many people have heard this. Is you take that nice deep breath, you know, that feels good. Yeah. So not you get right. rid of the crap, you know, the vaping and all that, you know, and whatever, all that stuff, and just start taking some clean, clear breaths. See if that feels better. Experiment. Give it a try, right? Yeah. So, um, I don't know why that was coming through though. It's just like smoking sort of energy. And you know that you let go of of that. It just the sense of uh, definitely the sense of like the old hanging on, like oh, you know, I might lose it. It's almost like um, it's a little bit sort sort of graphic, but like you know, like a a, a baby, like uh, mom, where where did you go? You know, I'm, I'm feeding, and like also you're go you know, it's that kind of feeling, like a like oh, what happened? Where is it? So so uh it's cool that you're doing this work to help people realize hey, no you got your own supply of, of nourishment you know just breathe you know like I, as an, I know you, there's more you teach but as an example like no you haven't been abandoned you haven't been you know left behind it's not because you did anything wrong you know because we get it in printing as kids it's really easy right uh and no do it like this whoa <laughs> so, yeah. It it's really imprint us, right? So you are really helping to clear that in the world, like the sense of, you know, you, you you were telling me as we were talking before, but like, yeah, just like this idea you got it wrong, you can't get it wrong, and, you know, you're whole as you are. Um, so I really could see, I could see you um, when the time is right in your life, definitely I see you in like dressed in white, like 
I don't know if you're going out in the, uh, somewhere uh, on the desert or something like taking people on voyages somewhere in the world. I get this. Amazing. I love that you said that because I've had dreams of like and visions of retreats and like doing things okay, like cool, that. Cool, cool. Yeah, I totally see that. That would, that would be perfect for you. So I get really excited about that. So let's see what else is coming through here. Yeah, you've got this pull between like, uh, what if it doesn't work out? Oh yeah, the, like that's the the, the old the, like that duh, 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 coming from the lower chakras, like, uh, and then um, but then it's funny you've got just the flip, you know, you have the flip of like, ah, oh, everything's possible, everything's happening, everything is so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you're you know, like just cheering everything on, everything's happening, and, and it's magical, it's easy. So as long as you keep going with that magical vibe, like that's where the ease and the flow and things are popping. But then it, it's like, it, it's that it's so if for some reason, I'm getting it more like from the lower chakras, like maybe mm -hmm. sacral energy, like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know, man, I, I, what do I got to do? Uh, uh, so it, it's got that kind of, it does sort of take you out for sure out of the breath. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I see like the cap on the third eye kind of energy. And it's like, um, maybe you get like these headaches or something. I get a feeling, um, around that. And it's just For like, sure. uh, migrainey or something like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's my head and sometimes it could be like in the jaw area. Yeah. Just a lot of pressure. And then when a pop, the bubble pops, it's like, Whoa, I'm really clear now is the vibe I get on that too. So, um, yeah, just, I just get that you, you're just really, uh you really just continue to move through that energy uh, you know you cleared obviously a, a lot and then you just keep clearing these uh energy uh stuck points in the system uh overall so oh uh, anyway uh so we probably need to wrap up at this point so i just want to share a couple of cool things Thank you for that. that was really uh, cool yeah no that definitely resonates i mean and that's why again like i'm so grateful seriously with breath work because like when you were speaking to the mindset, right? Like we can keep mind, 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 keep do this, do this, get it right, get it right. But when you get into the body and actually allow yourself to like shift it, then that's where all of the magic happens. It's like, oh, everything I'm doing in the mind, now it works with the body and voila, and there it is. And it can come into the physical, right? And I think that was the missing piece for me was like, it was like constant mindset, constant mindset, but nothing was fully shifting. Mm -hmm. And then that breath work happened. And that's where I went deeper on the journey you know and that's why now like you said when i get those moments of like oh is this going to happen is this going to happen mm -hmm. i don't let myself go back to those old patterns and i immediately recognize it and bring in the awareness and i'm like okay mm -hmm. time to breathe here we go you know and i'll sit with right. myself and start doing it you know and then all of a sudden i'm like oh okay yep we're good everything's possible i'm gonna you know what i mean and you're right and that's exactly what i think i'm like everything's possible everything is here for me because i truly believe that i truly believe God, the universe, our guides, everything around us, like are supporting us. If you're willing to surrender, if you're willing to step into it and really shed the ego and move forward, you mm -hmm. will be guided. And it may be way more of a twisty, crazy kind of roller coaster ride, but like it is so much better. And you are like hands up in the air, just allowing yourself to just flow and go, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing that because it definitely resonates. Awesome. Awesome. So if you guys want to check me out, go to YourSacredPurpose.com. Uh, you can get a Rock Your Sacred Purpose Energy Scan consultation. I just did a couple of quick downloads of some things for Allie today through that session. I'm going to dive into your, your chakras in a deeper way, much deeper way. But I, more importantly, on top of that, I'm going to take a look at you and your business and your, your energy with the money and everything and sales if you're a spiritual entrepreneur. And we're going to find out what wants to shake and bake within your, you know, your field. What wants, what needs to shift? What wants to happen? What wants to get created? You're going to gain a lot of insight, a lot of alignment, a lot of energy starts to move even during the energy scan for many people anyway uh, in the process. So check it out there at Your Sacred Purpose, the Rock Your Sacred Purpose energy scan consultation. You do actually have to invest in it. So only take advantage if you're ready to rock. And then the other thing is grab a meditate to make money meditation. It will absolutely open you up uh, in your chakras, your energy, and just it brings the breath of <laughs> energy of abundance of money starts connecting in your field. And you're just like, 
okay, yeah, let's have that. You know, <laughs> let's have whatever that next level is that you're you're wanting. It's just something just drops in, or you get a download or a new plan. Oh my God, let's do that. So check it out. People are thriving with that at yoursacredpurpose.com. All right. So Ali, uh, it's been so fun to have you on the show today. Do you have any last words of wisdom for everybody? <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you so much. I love your energy. Really appreciate you being here. I would just say, really ask yourself when, you know, something is happening, like what would change if I chose to take a conscious breath, not a, like a relax, but no, like a conscious, like think about that when you're listening to this. And if you feel like you haven't taken one, take one and allow the embodiment, because like you said before, I want you to be your best self breathe embody surrender and transform and you will go through the transformation yes amen <laughs> love it love it thank you Allie, for being on the show today it's been a bit awesome having you thank you so much all right and to our listeners keep on tuning in we'll keep on rocking it here at spiritual rockstar podcast till the next time listening to spiritual rockstar podcast stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each wednesday and saturday Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.